In this video, we're going to take a look at writing a program that converts temperatures in Fahrenheit to temperatures in Celsius. When I was a child in the UK, my parents always measured temperatures in Fahrenheit and that was what they were familiar with. But at some point we changed to Celsius and even my parents eventually had to make the change. So I'm only really familiar with Celsius in America Fahrenheit is used. So if an American says to me it's 97 degrees here, I don't know what that means. Let's write a program that can figure it out and tell us what 97 or whatever Fahrenheit would be in Celsius. So we want to write a program where the user can enter a temperature in Fahrenheit and the program prints a temperature in Celsius. If you're feeling ready for a challenge, you could actually already try to write this program yourself. One little tip that I will give you is that you're probably going to want to use the float built-in function, here it is, to convert a string to a float at some point in your program. And I found this page on almanac.com which tells us how to do the conversion. To convert Fahrenheit to Celsius, we first subtract 32 and then we multiply by 0.5556. So if you're feeling confident, you can already try to write that program. Just pause the video and have a go at it. Let's take a look at this. So firstly, we want to ask the user to enter a temperature in Fahrenheit. So let's say we need a variable to store it in. So temperature F, let's call it, equals input and we say enter a temperature in Fahrenheit. Hopefully I've spelt that correctly. Now we need to do a calculation and to store the result of the calculation, we will need a temperature C variable. So I'm gonna use this to store the result of the calculation where I convert Fahrenheit to Celsius. Let's take the temperature in Fahrenheit and subtract 32 and then we need to multiply by 0.556. Oh look, actually it's 0.5556. Okay, let's put another five in there. Now does that actually work so far? Let's just put in a really quick print and print out the temperature in Celsius. I think there are two problems with this program. If you want, you can pause the video and try to figure out what those two problems are. But don't spend too long over it because the easy way to find out is just to try to run the program. So let's say python converting temperatures.py and it says enter a temperature in Fahrenheit. Let's find out what 97 is in Celsius and we get a problem. So the problem that we get is occurring on line 3 and it says unsupported operand types for minus string and float. So here's our minus operator, our subtraction operator. On one side of it, we've got stuff that evaluates to a float, floating point value. On the other side, well, what is temperature F? It was returned from the input function, so it's going to be a string because input returns strings. We need to convert this to a floating point value before the program will run. And to do that, we can use the float built-in function. Now, the stuff on the left of the minus sign is a floating point number, and the stuff on the right is a floating point number. So that should work. Let's see what happens now. Enter a temperature in Fahrenheit, 9779. Now, when an American says it's 97 degrees, it's really hot, I don't think they mean it's nearly 80 Celsius, which is getting on for the boiling point of water. So clearly something's not right here. And the problem here is operator precedence. Remember, multiplications get evaluated before subtractions in calculations like this. So actually this is going to do whatever this is, minus 
32 times this, which is not what we want. We want to first subtract 32 and then multiply by 0 0.5556. So let's put some brackets around here to make this work properly. And now we can try it. 97 is 36 degrees Celsius, which is, I would consider it very hot. So that makes perfect sense. Now let's put some more text in just to make this, the output look a bit nicer. Let's say temperature F and add on, I've lost the bracket here. Let's put that back. So plus some text and I'll put a big F to indicate that this is a temperature in Fahrenheit is equal to plus temperature C. And then let's have a capital C to indicate a temperature in centigrade. There are ways to print a degree symbol if you really want it. Now, what do you think? Will this work? Well, we've got to remember that what we're trying to achieve with these plus signs is we're trying to concatenate strings. So these are better or be strings. Is temperature F a string? Well, we got it from input, so it was a string at the start. And then we use float to convert this string to an actual float. But this float function, or for that matter, the int or str functions, they don't change the variables that you pass to them. This float function accepts this string argument and returns a floating point value, but it doesn't change the original variable. So by the time we get down here, this is still a string. Temperature C, on the other hand, this is the result of a floating point calculation. So that is going to be a floating point value. We need to convert it to a string with the str function. And now it should work. Let's try it. I'm just going to get rid of this sidebar. Clear the screen. OK. Enter a temperature in Fahrenheit, 97. 97F is equal to 336.114C. Maybe it looks better with spaces there, but that's basically what I wanted to achieve. Now, if you haven't already tried to write this program or you haven't written it successfully, I would advise trying to write it. Put this code away, see how much you can write from memory, and then come back to this code if you can't remember how to do all of it. And once you've done that, you should be able to write simple programs that convert one thing to another. For example, that convert kilometers to miles or whatever you like. If you can't manage to write those kinds of simple programs at this stage, firstly, I would advise keep trying, figure out what bit it is you don't know and keep trying until you can write them. And if you're really totally lost, you might want to go over some of the videos in this section again. But the way that you know if you've absorbed all the stuff in this section of the course correctly is that you will be able to write programs that do simple conversions like this. So have a go. If you can't do it straight away, that's fine. But keep trying until you can manage to do it reasonably reliably. This is a free video from my Python and machine learning course. I'm uploading some videos from the start of the course to get you started with Python. The full course is absolutely huge and teaches you Python and the basics of machine learning and artificial intelligence with a ton of exercises and solutions. Please click the link in the description for the full course.